Let's go down to the bridge part of this song. We get it together. And what we're going to do down here in the bridge portion of the song is we're going to actually look at the flex tool again. First, I'm going to look at the flex tool and we're going to review what we did in the lab where we used the flex tool and then we s extended the note on a vocal part or a vocal phrase to sustain the note. And we're going to do the same thing here, but I'm going to show you how we can get inside the flex view and be even more detailed and more effective with the flex tool and, and try to help you understand all of that information that was given in class pretty fast in, in all honesty. So um, here in the bridge, I'm going to concentrate. I think it's this part down here. I'll play it from here. And I'll see what you need, so I'm going to play my position. Let you catch what you've been missing. I'm calling out. So this section where he says, let you see what I've been missing or what you've been missing. And then he pauses and then he says, I'm calling out. And we want to extend missing so that it extends further down towards where he says I'm calling out. Missing, I'm calling out. Kind of want to get rid of that pause there. So what we're going to do is we're going to first hit escape and select our flex tool. Now with our flex tool in hand, if I click on this region to get ready to flex it, of course my flex mode menu pops up here at the top and it asks me which flex mode that I do I want to use? And of course, if you recall, we can look at all the different flex modes and get all the information we want about them from the drop down menu here. So monophonic, good for solo vocals and monophonic solo instruments, for example, melodies and bass lines. This flex mode can deliver high quality, high sonic quality, but the recording needs to be relatively dry without audible reverb. If you have reverb, you want to use polyphonic and it's a medium CPU CPU load. And you can change this to rhythm or whatever you want, and you'll see the different information about it. So we're going to choose monophonic because this is a monophonic vocal part for the most part. We're going to say OK. So it's analyzing the audio file. And once it analyzes the audio file, it will become flexed. And now we can use our flex tool on it to extend this phrase. I'm going to zoom into it a little bit more so I can be a little bit more specific here. So what I want to do is I want to extend this note right here. Missing. That missing, I want to extend it so it sustains longer and gets closer to this part where he comes back in. I'm calling. Now, I'm going to show you two things. I'm going to pull it over and then I'm going to keep pulling it over. And I want you to notice that if I pull it too far, this note right here will move out of place. I'm calling. And that's not what we want to happen. So watch, I'm going to click here and I'm going to drag it. And as I get closer to that, did you see what happened right there? I'm calling out just got shifted to the right. And if I play back here. Missing. I'm calling. So missing was extended, but I'm calling out is later and is now rushed to try to fit in place so that the rest of the song can be in place. Listen. You've been missing. I'm calling out. Which sounds bad or good depending on who you are. I'm going to undo it. All right. And what I want to do is show you if we go into flex view, which is right here or command F, take you into flex view. And in flex view, you can actually see the audio file behind the scenes of the flex mode. You'll notice over here in your track header, it'll tell you which flex mode this track has been flexed in. It's in monophonic flex mode. And you'll notice this track hasn't been flexed at all. It says off, but you could click here and choose a different flex mode if you want to. Just showing you that I'm not going to flex that. Also, on the actual track and region that we're focusing on, right here where the uh, vocal part missing, you see these very faint gray lines across here. These very faint gray lines are where Logic has actually went in when it analyzed that file and it put in markers at transient points. Now, those transient markers are very important to where we actually put flex markers. Transient markers are there from the analysis. That's how it would, if we quantize it, it will quantize it based on those. Or if we um, moved something with the flex markers, not the transient markers, but if we wanted to use a flex marker, 
it would place them on those transient markers for the most part. So what happened when we actually did what we did before we went into FlexView and we moved this and this shifted down, I'll show you. We had our mouse down here at the bottom and it looked kind of like this. Now there's no flex marker here. So that's why these R2 right now just looks like three straight lines. It only gets the little triangle on the top of it if it's over an actual flex marker. I mean, an actual transient marker, excuse me. Uh, so now you see it's over a transient marker, so now you have the little triangles over top of it. But when we place it outside of where there's no transient markers, we get a tool that looks like this when we're at the bottom half, which means that if I click now, it will actually create a flex marker, even though there's no flex marker there or no transient marker there at this point where my mouse is. And it will also put a flex marker at the next transient marker to the right of it and at the transient marker to the left of it. So what happened behind the scenes when we clicked before we went into flex view and we did what we did is we clicked around here and you see what happened. It creates a flex marker exactly where you have your mouse at. And it also created a flex marker to the left and to the right. The flex markers are notated by those orange diamonds or arrows that are pointing down at the top. It looks like a ruler now. So when we stretched with this, as it got to a point where we were going a little bit too close to that next flex marker, it actually pushed that note down like that. And we got that rushing of this part and sustaining of that part because we went too far. I'm missing. I'm calling out. Right. So that's what happened originally. So. What we want to say is we don't want that to happen. So if you take your mouse, anytime you don't have the diamonds on it, you can create flex markers at places where there aren't transient markers. So there's no triangle or diamond at the top of this right now, and there's none down here. Well, with this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an additional flex marker here before this, in this space before this, where there's no transient marker. And that's going to help protect this piece that happens after it. So now... If I go here and put my mouse here, there's already a transient marker to the right, which is going to give me some space. And I can move this left or right, not from right there. Well, maybe I have to undo it. I can undo that by just double clicking on it and move it to the left or to the right. I actually want to put it a little bit closer to this one. So I'm going to put it right there. And what I'm going to do is click now to sustain this note again, but I'm going to click in this area here. It's going to create a flex marker where I clicked that. It's going to also create one back to the left side of it. And we already created one to the right to protect it. And now what I'm going to, it's, it's actually protecting that next phrase that's coming after it. And now I'm going to stretch this over as close as I want to this flex marker. They can almost go right on top of each other like so. And when I let it go, it's going to ask me, do I really want to create a high speed section? Now, I'm going to back up a little bit and show you why it's asking that. But what it says is the red section is time compressed by a factor of 64, which may cause system overloads. Let me cancel that and show you what happened again. So we got this flex marker that we created to protect this region. And this piece of audio right here that I'm going to squeeze towards, there's really nothing there that I'm, uh, I'm really needing to keep at this point. I'm going to click here, and when I start squeezing this way, you remember when you compress audio in Flex View, if it turns green, that means you're squeezing it and speeding it up. And if it turns orange, that means you're stretching it or slowing it down. So you'll notice the right side is becoming more and more green. And when you compress it too much, it'll actually turn red, like you just saw it turn red there. But it's just such a little insignificant amount, I'm going to squeeze it almost completely away to this point right here and let it go and say okay to this. Now you see this is orange. This didn't shift and we still got the note sustained here. Let me back up a little bit and play it. Catch what you've been missing. I'm calling out. So it sustained a little bit. We didn't sustain it extensively, but we sustained it past bar 55. Sounds like this. Been missing. I'm calling out. As opposed to what it sounded like originally. I'm calling out. Now we can make this even more extensive or more of a sustain by just coming back further this way with this tool 
and then stretching. I'm still protecting that next line with that marker that I, that flex marker that I put in there. Say okay to that. So now we have even more of a sustain. That's what you've been missing. I'm calling out, girl. Cause One more time. Oops. I'm gonna play my position. Let you catch what you've been missing. I'm calling out, girl. Cause I Once you use your flex tool and you want to squeeze or stretch something, when you click on one of these lines with the flex tool, it creates one of these orange lines, which is your flex marker. And that is used to let you shift the audio in one direction or the other. When you place your mouse at the bottom of the audio region, you get a different flex tool, which has three diamonds or triangles on the top of them, which if you click, will create a flex marker on top of the transient that you're at and to the transient to the left and transient to the right like such. So now you see one on the left, one on the right, and the one in the middle that it created. If you want to create transient markers that don't exist, then you place your mouse at a point in between transient markers and it doesn't have a diamond on it and you click and it won't create a transient marker per se, but it'll click create a flex marker there even though that there is no transient marker. So if I want a flex marker here, even though there's no transient marker in between here, I can just put my mouse here and click. And now I could adjust that piece of audio if I want to. And the same thing at the bottom. If I want to create a flex marker here, even though there's no transient marker, but I also want to create one at the bordering transient markers that do exist, I can click here in the middle and it creates transient markers on the left. Uh, flex markers to the transient mark on the left and a flex marker to the transient mark on the right and I can squeeze and stretch that information in the middle of that. Okay. Let's uh, go to the beginning of the song. Let me zoom back out here a couple times. Go to the beginning. And I want to show you how you can use the flex tool with the marquee tool and how that could be beneficial. So I'm going to zoom in on this part here at the beginning and play from here oh, I can't help but wait. check it out now let's say we wanted to move this phrase right here where he says can't help but wait can't help but wait we don't necessarily want to squeeze it or do anything to it we just want to move it over in the song now of course we could outside of flex view we could select it with the marquee tool, cut it out, and then just move it left or right like that, right? But without even ever cutting it out of the region. See, I put it back in the region. I'm gonna go back into flex view. We can still use the marquee tool. So I'm holding down command to access my marquee tool. And I'm gonna click and drag across this phrase of the song. Can't help but wait. Now, with that selection in flex view, if I take my mouse and put it here at the top, when I click on it, it creates flex markers at the end of my marquee selection on both sides. And then it also creates a flex marker to the next transient marker to the left of my selection and to the next transient marker to the right of my selection. And what that will allow me to do is take this piece of information and move it left or right in the song. So I can basically move that piece of audio. You see it's going to squeeze or stretch a little bit of information that's to the left or right of it as I move it left and right. So let's say I just, I don't know what this is going to sound like. This is just a random piece. I'm just going to shift it to the right a little bit. And now we'll play it and see it's shifted. It's probably going to sound terrible. Okay, help. Oh, let me, I got to take, get rid of my selection so it doesn't play right from the selection. Oh, I can't help but wait. So the timing is terrible, but I was able to take this piece of audio right here and just move it because it had that selection on it. 